So in this section, we're going to talk uh, about the ozone layer a little bit closer to Earth. If you check back on our first chart again, sorry, I'm scrolling really quickly. Um, the ozone layer is actually in the stratosphere. So we're going to kind of focus here a little bit because we've got some more chemistry going on there. Notice we kind of skipped the mesosphere. There's really not a whole lot that goes on there. We talked about ionosphere, and now we're going to get down here into the stratosphere. And what specifically goes on with ozone? Okay, ozone, obviously very important. Our ozone layer is what keeps us kind of alive. Um, we talked about photoionization and photodissociation that occur that protect us from those harmful rays, um, but there is more that has to do with the ozone layer. Okay, so ozone, which is O3, in case you didn't know, is in our, what we consider our upper atmosphere. It is Earth's final defense against harmful radiation. So if it gets through and is not photoionized or photodissociated, then um, it's kind of absorbed by the ozone layer, you can say. So this is in our upper atmosphere. Okay, we call it kind of Earth's final defense. Earth's final defense okay, against harmful radiation. Oops. Harmful radiation. Okay, so I did want to make a note here. Again, um, we're getting closer to Earth's atmosphere. So below 90 kilometers, um, it's mostly short wavelengths that get through, um, or if short wavelengths get through, sorry, those high energy radiation, most of it's already been absorbed, right? Photo dissociation, photo ionization, ionosphere kind of getting used up. But photo dissociation of oxygen still occurs down to about 30 kilometers. Because if you remember before, when we did the calculations for photo dissociation of oxygen, that did not require as high of energy and that just used visible light. So of course those can still occur. So essentially what's happening, since photo dissociation still occurs, we've still got O's, plain O's. And what they do is they will react with an O2. And of course we get O3, which is ozone. Now I'm gonna put a little asterisk by it because this is a very high energy molecule which means it's very reactive, very high energy. Okay, um, and this occurs between 30 and 90 kilometers, 30 and 90 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Um, there's a lot of collisions going on and both of these exist, so that's where we're gonna get our ozone, right? So during the reaction, ozone contains excess energy, right? I just said that it's a very high energy. It's actually got an extra 105 kilojoules per mole of energy that it needs to get rid of because it's very unstable. It's got to be transferred away. So this is called the ozone cycle, and this is how it works, okay? We've got our oxygen molecule. Um, remember, we had photo dissociated oxygen because that does not require super high energy waves. They react together and we get this ozone molecule that is actually pretty reactive and high energy. So what's going to happen is that single oxygen is going to disconnect again, and that's where we're going to start reacting with things. Um, this is the very reactive part, performs oxidation of a lot of other molecules. And then we're back to getting a single oxygen or an O2 molecule, essentially. Okay, so it is a cycle and it just keeps going and going and going, which is why the ozone layer is, of course, still there, okay? Um, so essentially what's going to happen is going to, once we have our ozone, right, we're talking about right here, this is ozone, O3, um, it's going to want to react with other molecules to release that energy. And that's what's happening here is it's breaking off. Reactions with other molecules so it can release that energy and get to a more stable molecule, which is O2, okay? So that rate of ozone then depends on two opposing factors based on this cycle above. It is based on the concentration of single O's, right? If you've got more photo dissociation, you would have more single oxygens, okay? Um, and these actually increase with altitude because the higher up you are, the more photo dissociation you would have because you have more high energy up with it. I apologize for that. Um, so the concentration of single O's will increase with altitude because we have more photo dissociation. So because more 
happy day because as you go up, the more available energy, more available photons there are. Um, and this kind of combats with the concentrations of single oxygen, O2, N2, um, because of collisions, because of collisions. Okay, these molecules actually are going to, the, the collisions are going to decrease with altitude because the higher up you go, there are just less molecules in general. Um, so you're not going to have as many collisions. So it's a balance between availability of single oxygens and collisions of molecules because you just don't have as many molecules the higher you go. Okay, so there's actually a sweet spot kind of the highest rate of ozone formation is actually at about 50 kilometers. So that means that the highest concentration of ozone kind of settles under that. So the highest concentration of O3 is at about 25 kilometers, which is where the ozone layer is. Okay, so this is our ozone layer. So it's kind of this balance, which is why when we talk about um, all of these things, depleting the ozone layer or greenhouse gases or changes in um, any of those types of things, it's really because it's a balance between all of these different factors. And if one thing changes, you get a whole bunch of other changes as well. Okay, so that's kind of where the ozones are. Now, there's a whole bunch of other reactions that occur as well. So we're going to kind of talk about some of these ozone reactions. So um, ozone itself. So the photo dissociation of ozone is also something that happens. Um, this is a weaker bond than O2 was because it's not just a double bond. It has a double and a single bond, which is really like a one and a half because of resonance. So photo dissociation of O3, it's a weaker bond, bond than O2. So it absorbs, absorbs. Um, at a wavelength of about 1140 nanometers or shorter. Okay, which means it can kind of be broken apart a little bit easier than oxygen and sulfur. Um, so the strongest and most important absorptions that O3 does are from UV. Okay, specifically UVB and UVC. Specifically. UVB and UVC. These are the ones that really harm us. So it's really great that ozone can absorb those in its breakdown um, instead of letting them make it all the way to earth and hurt us. So if we're looking at the whole enthalpy of ozone cycle, we're looking at the whole ozone cycle here. That whole ozone cycle and energy used and energy given off, the net enthalpy of the ozone cycle is exothermic. Okay, which means that ozone cycle releases energy overall. So that explains why in our stratosphere, the temperature starts to increase again. So we were talking about that whole temperature thing in the first video and that it is different. Um, it decreases until you get to that stratosphere and then the temperature starts increasing again. And it's because the ozone cycle is exothermic. So that's why temperature increases with altitude in the stratosphere. Okay, we've got all these reactions happening with ozone and they give off energy overall. So um, ozone, again, we're talking about ozone reactions now and you've heard of depletion of the ozone layer. I'm gonna talk about one of the most important reactions that's caused a depletion of the ozone layer. And that is from something you've probably heard of called CFCs or chlorofluorocarbons. These were the things that they used to put in um, refrigerants and uh, sprays and stuff, okay? Um, these were actually discovered in 1974, discovered in... 1974, um, and it's the chlorines in these that actually destroy ozone. So the CLs destroy O3. Okay, so what are chlorofluorocarbons? Obviously, there's something that has chlorine and fluorine in them. They are CfCl3 and CF2Cl2. So it's like a methane molecule, but instead of hydrogens, it's got these halogens. 
Okay, so the chlorines are actually what cause all of the problems. So the photo dissociation of a CFC in the stratosphere. So if these molecules get into the stratosphere, which is what was happening, they were being released from refrigerants um, or uh, aerosol sprays, and they get into the atmosphere and they react with some wavelength of light, and we get a chlorine essentially to break off, and we get these guys. Now that might look a little weird as well, right? Um, Chlorine by itself is not very stable, very reactive, which again causes problems, okay? So when this gets to the stratosphere, gets to stratosphere, and it interacts with those wavelengths of light um, at less than 225 nanometers, we get these chlorine molecules. Now these chlorine single molecules, like I said, are really, really bad. These are the whole problem. Okay. Um, and if you look at this little process here, this is what happens. Okay. We've got the UV light um, hits the CFC and it breaks off that chlorine. Okay. This chlorine is called a free radical. This is an extremely reactive um, atom. Okay. So extremely reactive. Essentially, it's got an odd number of electrons, which nothing likes to have an odd number of electrons. Um, and so we've got this free radical chlorine. It's got seven electrons, super, super reactive. And so what it does in number two here, the free chlorine atoms hit an ozone molecule. And then it breaks apart the ozone molecule. We get an O2 and an O with a chlorine. Um, then a free oxygen atom can hit it and kind of release the chlorine again. And the chlorine can just go and go and go and break up more ozone and more ozone and more ozone, um, which of course breaks down the ozone layer. So CFCs, um, like I said, what they were used in. So let's put that. CFCs were used in refrigerants. Okay. Um, they were pretty unreactive close to the surface pretty unreactive near the surface. So we didn't really know this was causing a problem um, until they got into the upper atmosphere. Uh, so when they get up there in the stratosphere and they start causing all of this havoc and breaking down the ozone. So I've got these reactions kind of down here. Chlorine kind of hits an ozone and breaks into ClO and O2. <clears throat> and if I want you to look at this uh, rate here as well. This is very quickly. Okay, 7.2 times 10 to the ninth per molarity second is very, very fast. And the whole problem with the ozone cycle is then CLO breaks down and regenerates more free chlorine, which means the chlorine was used and then it was given off again. So it kind of acts like a catalyst and they just stay there and cause all, all of these ozone molecules to break down. Okay. This is almost like a catalyst. Okay, it just keeps breaking them down and breaking them down because of that ozone um, cycle. Okay, you keep getting chlorines, they keep breaking them down. Okay, um, so this has caused problems, obviously, in the thinning of the ozone layer because it's breaking down the ozone. Um, and what we have seen are polar stratospheric cloud formation or PSC formation. You can kind of see in these pictures. Uh, let's say 1979 and then 2011. Okay? And of course, it's gotten worse since then, essentially. Um, and these are, like I said, caused thinning at the poles, caused ozone thinning at the poles. That's what this is a picture of. And you might have heard that ozone essentially breaks down worse at the poles. Um, because that's where we get large quantities of those chlorine free radicals. They kind of concentrate there. Okay, so cause ozone thinning at the poles because they concentrate. That's what these clouds are. Concentrate large quantities of Cl free radical. Okay, so it's like we got large quantities of these free radicals at the poles. Um, because of those polar stratospheric clouds kind of condensing and forming. And that's where we have all that ozone breaking down. So it doesn't really matter where it's released in the world. They kind of concentrate at the poles. Okay, so our solution was to 
eliminate CFCs, of course, okay? Elimination of CFCs. So aerosols are fine now. Um, don't be like worried that you're spraying chemicals that are gonna deplete the ozone layer. We actually got rid of all these CFCs. Um, the problem is they're still in a lot of old appliances um, and we can't just like get rid of them, all right? Elimination of CFCs. So our problem is there are still a lot of old appliances using these, okay? So a lot of old ones have them. What we've done is actually replaced them with CH2 FCF3. So these are like bigger molecules um, and fluorine is way less reactive than the chlorine, way less reactive. So they can still refrigerate um, but they're not going to become free radicals and break down the ozone layer. 